Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, starting our time together this morning, we're going to look at a little bit of a video, and I want to explain just before we begin that video. Basically, what you're going to look at is a bunch of tourists who have shown up in a field where there are some sheep feeding and kind of doing sheep-like things, okay? And there's going to be three people that you see kind of right in a row trying to call the sheep to them using the words that the shepherd has given them. Okay? And then the last person you're going to see is the shepherd. Now bear with them because this is something they have never seen before. So they get a little excited in the video, but just bear with them. Okay, let's watch that video together. Pretty incredible, huh? I mean, you got three people right in a row trying to call the sheep. And what did the sheep do? Just keep going about their business, right? Not even paying attention to them. I think maybe one head perks up out of all those sheep, maybe. But... They just keep going about their business. And then you have on the other side where the shepherd calls them. And what happens? All the heads perk up, right? And they start buying left and right. And they even come running towards the shepherd. It's pretty incredible what happens when the shepherd calls his sheep. And not just in the video for today, but also for you and me in our lives today as Jesus, as our shepherd, continually calls us back to himself. Now as we look at our gospel text for today from John chapter 10, apparently there were some people who couldn't hear him, couldn't see him clearly. Look to the screen. So the Jews gathered around him and said to Jesus, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. What are they saying? Jesus, we haven't heard you. We haven't seen what you've done. We don't even know from what we've heard and seen that you are the Christ. So just tell us plainly, right? We want to hear it. We want to see it for ourselves. The problem is Jesus has been doing that so they could hear it and see it. Look to the screen. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. So what's Jesus' response? I have been doing this stuff, right? And it hasn't been done in private. It hasn't been done secretly. It's been out there for you to hear and see for yourselves, yet you cannot hear it and you cannot see it. Why? In Jesus' words, because they aren't his sheep. Now let's be clear about something here. Jesus isn't telling them that he doesn't want them as his sheep right? It's not like he's sitting there telling them, sorry guys, flock's full, okay? Have to find a different one now. No, he wants them. He wants them to become part of his flock, but the problem with these people in Jesus' day is that they've heard the voice of another shepherd for far too long. And we have to understand that as we look at our text for today, while Jesus doesn't address that directly, there is another shepherd, who has the same goal as Jesus, trying to enlarge his flock, trying to bring as many sheep as he possibly can to himself. And that other shepherd is Satan himself. You know, it kind of looks like the three people who tried to call the sheep to them, right? Now, to be clear, I'm not saying those three people are Satan, okay? They're nice people, I'm sure, all right? But what I am saying is that it's done in a similar way, trying to call the sheep away from the shepherd, trying to take them away from the shepherd. And of course, Satan uses his lies and his deceit to accomplish that. It's why he's known as the deceiver, right? It's not a nickname he picked up in elementary school from a bunch of buddies, okay? It's a well-earned reputation. It's a well-earned name. And you know, he's still at work even in our lives today. And it comes in even some of the more basic choices we make in our lives. Like, for example, do we get up 5, 10, 15 minutes earlier to do devotions? Or do we just stay sleeping because, well, we need to sleep in? Or or do we come to church every week? Or are there a couple of weeks where we don't come just because, well, we've got other things to do? You know, do we sacrifice our our time, our energy, our effort, our finances uh, to show other people the same love that Christ has shown to us? Or do we just keep that for ourselves because we need it more than them? 
You know, I got to tell you, one of the great temptations for me as a pastor is when I go on vacation and that great debate of where I should go to worship if I should even worship at all, right? Because I'm at church every weekend, every single weekend. And so you bet that question comes into my mind. Satan tempts me wondering whether or not I should go. And you know, in doing that, he does his job. Because what happens when that happens? What happens when we don't go to worship? What happens when we don't do our devotions? What happens when we don't sacrifice or serve with the same love that Christ has shown to us? Well, dear friends, he's pulled us away from the places, from the opportunities where we can hear and see our shepherd clearly where we can hear his voice clearly in our lives and where we can see him at work in our lives. In not going to worship and devotions and serving all that stuff, he's pulled us away from that and pulled us closer into his voice, full of lies, full of deceit, where it becomes ever increasingly harder to hear the voice of the true shepherd. But you know, dear friends, there is still hope. Because Jesus, as shepherd, goes after his sheep. Right? And more importantly, he constantly calls them back to himself. And when I think about Jesus calling his sheep back to himself, I can't help but think about moms on this Mother's Day. Moms, do you ever feel like shepherds? Right? Constantly herding your sheep, right? feeding them, grooming them. You know, I watch my wife do her job, her work as a mom. And that's the picture I get, and she does it so, so well. Because you think about what goes into that, right? Kids who are angry, kids who wander off, kids who yell, kids who ignore their parents, who want nothing to do with their parents at times, who do things that they know they're not supposed to do. And yet moms go back for their kids time and time again. Why? Because they love them. Because they care for them. And they know it's not the first time that their children have done those things. And it won't be the last time. Yet they constantly go back because of the love and care that they have for their children. And the same goes for Jesus as our shepherd. The sheep wander off, don't we? We tend to get angry. We tend to yell. We tend to ignore. We tend to do things that we know we're not supposed to do. And yet Jesus comes calling back to us time and time again. Why? Because he loves us. Because he loves you. And he cares for you. And he knows that this isn't the first time we've done those things. And he knows that it's not going to be the last time. Yet he keeps coming back time and time again because of the love and the care that he has for you each and every day. And that's the reason why this other shepherd, why Satan, has to work so hard. Because our shepherd works even harder. And his voice is much louder and even though the lies and the deceit from Satan himself can be overwhelming, they pale in comparison to what Christ calls out to you as your shepherd. Calling out to you to share with you that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Calling out to you to remind you that you are forgiven. Calling out to you to remind you that you are loved. Calling out to you to remind you that you belong to him. Calling out to you so that you can respond in your life. Did you catch that in the video when the shepherd spoke? What happened with the sheep? Right? Their head perked up and they started bawling left and right. Ba, ba, ba. That's the best sheep impersonation you're going to get today. Okay? That's as best as it gets, guys, all right? That's where we're at today. But they couldn't stop talking, right? They heard their shepherd, they saw him for themselves, and they couldn't stop talking. May that be true for you and me as we hear and see our shepherd each and every day of our lives. Because I guarantee, dear friends, in your life, 
is someone just like the people in Jesus' day. People who cannot hear. People who cannot see for themselves the shepherd who constantly is calling out to them because they're so immersed. Because they've been so consumed by Satan and his lies and his deceit in their lives. Give them another voice to listen to. The voice of the shepherd who calls out to them. Who calls out to them reminding them of his love who calls out to them, reminding them that they are forgiven through him, calling out to them to share with them that they belong to him. Share the voice of the shepherd who is constantly calling out because the shepherd constantly cares. Amen? Amen. Thank you.